the rice is boring, this is how you make it exciting. I'm in New York. When I crave for Filipino food, first thing you go to is go to Woodside. Mm. You always see something interesting in Queens. Oh! You already know the vibes. We outside. Uh Welcome everybody to a special Filipino episode of Fung Bros Food. Today we are out in Little Manila, Woodside, Queens. We are here with none other than coast to coast Filipino, Ryan Benson. What's up guys? So good to see you. I'm so excited today guys. I'm showing you where I grew up, right here under Roosevelt Station in Little Manila guys. So you grew up in this area as a child? Yes, I used to walk here from 58th and Broadway where my Lola lives and we would walk here every single day to pick up Ihawan, crispy pata, barbecue pork. I know that this area is fighting for the legal representation to be called Little Manila right now, right? Out in LA, you have historic Filipino town. And given that, I definitely believe that this street right here, given the history and the culture with all the Filipino immigrants, definitely deserves a designation as Little Manila. All right, so you know we covered a lot of Filipino food out in Manhattan, but we had to come to the source, come to the traditional area. We're gonna hit up some spots that you grew up going to. We're gonna hit up some spots that are maybe a little bit newer, but overall, we are about to go on a journey through Little Manila. I will tell you this, every time I'm in Queens, I always see some stuff where I'm like, man, that's pretty interesting. Woodside, Woodside Queens, Queens, Little Manila, Manila. Let's, let's go. go. Hey, what's going on everybody? I know we're eating some pork in that video, but I gotta tell you about plant-based pork. Yes, you heard it, and that brings us to our sponsor of today, Omni Foods. They are Asia's number one leading plant-based meat brand, and they are now making it to the States. They're in Sprouts and Whole Foods nationwide, so click on that link down below to find one. All right, so Omni has a whole diverse product line with a lot of different types of meat, but I'm gonna be showing you two quick recipes with the luncheon meat, AKA Spam. You know what it is, Spam over rice and kimchi jjigae. Omni pork luncheon is a healthier alternative to spam as it's rich in protein provides a lot of calcium potassium and dietary fiber with zero milligrams of cholesterol there's 50 percent less sodium and no added nitrates all omni food products are non-gmo certified i'm just so happy this hong kong brand is now being sold in a ton of stores here i mean look at it it looks and cooks just like spam i cannot wait to try the other products wow it's actually meatier than spam it tastes almost like a mixture between beef and spam, and it's a lot less salty. Listen, I know spam is good, but Omni Luncheon Pork is coming through with the flavor. It's more healthy, less sodium, and it still gives you that same vibe. So I'm telling you, you've got to check it out at your Sprouts and Whole Foods. It's worth a shot if, if you know, you're looking for a plant-based alternative. All right, you guys, we've arrived here at Ihuan, and your name is Jackie, right? Yes, and, I am. And you're the daughter of the owner here? Can you tell us about this spot? Well, my parents started this uh, 27 years ago, and we just started with really like the pork and the chicken barbecue. I'm sure you know that. It became so popular really quickly that we've expanded the menu and actually expanded the place about two times. I know definitely it's my man is Lola. Wow, so you remember Ryan when he was a kid. Oh, yeah. yeah. You have a handsome kid. Right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> this gigantic platter has arrived on a banana leaf here at Iwan. Yeah, so at Iwan, they brought the big guns for us. I mean, we got the staples here. We have the crispy pata, we have the barbecue pork, the barbecue chicken, the garlic rice, the pancit, the kare kare with the bagaong. The crispy pata here is my Lolo's favorite crispy mm. pata. I used to come here all the time to have it with him. And if you guys didn't know, crispy pata is fried pork knuckles. Oh, oh my god. Any type of pork knuckle, man. Barbecue, barbecue chicken. Mmm. Oh man, yo. I love that char. That's really strong. That's some of the better barbecue chicken I've had in a while, bro. It has like this nice little sweet flavor, mm -hmm. and then the charcoal really comes out. Barbecue, barbecue pork. pork. My grandma would come to Yihao Long and would come back with a stack of like 20 of these because my cousins and I all grew up in one house and we would all clamor for the barbecue pork skewers. I'm telling you, this is like the best mm. Filipino barbecue you can have. This is good. Shanghai, Shanghai Lumpia. Lumpia. That, crisp. that is one of the best lumpia I ever had. This is my favorite lumpia. I'm telling you guys, like, when it comes to Filipino food, you have to come to Ihawa. Yo, Ryan, so when we're talking about the region of Pampangas, it actually sounds like, now that I realize it, a lot of the restaurant owners are from Pampangas. So, Pampangas is known for the best food in the Philippines. And so, 
When you look at restaurants, you know, out here in Woodside or in LA or wherever you are, the majority of them, at least the good ones, are gonna be from Pampanga. Pampanga Sisig. Mm. The thing I love about Sisig, the pig mm. snout, the cheek, the jowl, the best parts of the, the pig, the fattiest parts, all in one dish. All right, you guys, we have two really different dishes, the kare kare, and then the pancit, right? The pancit has a little bit more of the Chinese influence, but I feel like this is pure, you know, island. Kare kare, I, I believe, is one of the only peanut butter dishes, I would say, in Asia. You don't really see that many stews that have peanut butter. And it has oxtail, which is one of those ingredients that really need to cook for a while. I'm going in, because you know, this is- Wait, 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 guys. You forgot. The bago. Oh, the bago. Mm. You guys gotta do one thing to really make me happy, and that's try this avocado shake. You you swear by this avocado shake. I shape. swear by it. It is my favorite drink. Okay, I could see why. It, it's addicting, I'm telling you. The avocado has already been blended with something sweet mm -hmm. already, so I thought it was gonna be straight up just raw avocado with that very healthy vibe to it. That avocado's already been desertified. As far as traditional Filipino restaurants I've been to, this is the best one. Oh. And, Right, I'm so glad we got to come here. Not only is it dear to you, but actually the food lived up to it. What a great start to our journey. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that you guys gave me the opportunity to show this place to you. It means so much to me, and uh, thank you guys. All right, moving on to our next spot that's right around the corner. It is Casina, and introducing the new spot, we got Harry B from the Bronx. What's up? Hey guys, what's good? You know the vibes. <laughs> Carrie B, you're from the Bronx originally, but you lived in the Philippines for a number of years, right? Yeah, so I lived in the Philippines for six years. Nursing school, like every other kid that wants to get a better education from dumb cheap. <laughs> <laughs> but but, but you... the quality of care is the same, right? If the you quality of care is top notch. If you've been in any hospital, Grey's Anatomy don't count. There's <laughs> mad Filipinos oh, in the that, hospital. That was not authentic representation of a nursing staff in Grey's Anatomy. No, it was not. Gandomaga, you know, bring me to your titas, mommy, whoever. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yo, we gotta get into Cucina because, Brian, I heard that they have some really unique looking dishes, right? Yo, so Cucina is really famous for this gigantic calamari that like hangs from this like little skewer thing. I'm so excited to try it. I love squid. I don't know about you guys, but. It kind of looks like something out of a movie, right? It, yeah, it kind of looks like this little alien looking thing. <laughs> well, let's we'll check it out, man. We gotta check it out. Cucina. Cucina. It's more like bar music and a little bit of dancing. We do a lot of Filipino kind of songs here now. So during the night time, we're going to have fun, enjoy, like, yeah. And also, we serve the local Filipino beers. So basically, you will feel like you're in the Philippines. We got red horse. Right. We have Yo, red horse. Red horse. Okay, uh, guys, are we going out in the Philippines tonight? Yo, guys, we are going out in Manila. Yeah. I guess I, I, we outside. We outside. We outside. I guess if we're at a nightlife yeah. place, we gotta sing a karaoke song. Still some cover shares, some skin. I need my beer. Glass of shining, a sweet moment, unforgettable. You twist and fit the bowl that I miss. Saturday morning, and I never want to leave. Guys, we're at our number two spot. What are we looking at? Yo, so we got the calamari gigante here. It is like nothing I've ever seen before. It's almost like an alien predator type thing meets KFC. This is like the real squid game. This, yeah. is, the, this yeah. is the real squid game this right, is the real squid game right game here. Right Yo, right here. tell me that doesn't look like KFC breading though, real quick. It does, uh, dude. It was a uh, some of the tentacles were falling off, and I was just like, Yo, <laughs> this is like, real, a, <laughs> this is like crazy. Yo. So what I think is cool about Casina is that it's trying to recreate like Filipino nightlife, right? Like the yeah. stuff that you would see in. Manila. Yeah. Gigantic, Gigantic calamari. This is Filipino bar food at its finest, guys. Got a dip that shit in vinegar. Mmm. The breading on this is so crispy. It's so fried, and the vinegar complements it perfectly. It helps cut through that mm. fattiness, that like real richness of the fry. Mm. So, Perry, you're familiar going to like these Filipino like bar spots, right? Mm -hmm. So, like back in the day when I was going to nursing school, we used to go to this spot called Central. It's like it's not really low key because it's mad packed and there's like picnic tables everywhere and everybody drinks, but everybody gets like seasick things like that. So it's more like this is like bar drinking food, something you can. Like pika pika, that's what we call it, you eat with your hands. So everything's like pika pika, you pick up, you eat with your hands. Like that, I would eat with my hands. The squid, I would eat with oh. my hands. Pika pika, like Pikachu. Yeah, but pika, like, not pika. to be confused with Pikachu. Mm -hmm. 
You guys gotta get down on the cheese muscles. Oh my God. You know what's different? The you know what's different? They use cheddar cheese, mm. but it's sharp cheddar. Dude, the cheese oh, is yeah. so perfect with it. You gotta, you gotta have a nice sharp cheese to kind of stand up to the flavor of like the muscle. Okay, we are here with Filipino bar food expert Carrie. What are we looking at? Because you were insistent that we get the garlic rice or white rice with this dish. So honestly, what you gotta do is you gotta take this and you gotta smother all that sauce okay. with your rice. Take a little bit of shrimpies, you know what I'm saying? And this is this is shrimp with salted egg yolk, right? Yes. Yeah, so all of it, it's like sweet, savory, and creamy. You were saying that this dish to you sort of like embodies the whole Filipino flavor palette. You know what? Every Filipino dish, I feel like is very distinct, but they all have to carry like a lot of flavor, like things like that. Like you have to, because the rice, if the rice is boring, this is how you make it exciting. Your entree, you gotta make it exciting with this. Like everything gotta have salsa. You gotta have salsa that's like to soak up. I don't know how to say it. It's like you soak up the, the rice and things like that. With the sauce. With the sauce. Okay. Yeah. Juice, juice is temporary. Sauce. The sauce is forever. All right, you guys. This is the salted egg yolk shrimp. Oh, okay. Wait, that shit is good. They do it really good here. And you get that like coconut flavor with the salted egg yolk. Mm. It's a nice like flavor balance. Wow. Oh man. You know it's good when you want to eat the shell. All right, you guys, this spot have a lot of new desserts. Traditional, but I think the presentation is like a little, little fusion. A little new, I wouldn't say fusion, but a little new age. Right here, we have my favorite Filipino dessert. We have toron, which is plantains and sometimes jackfruit wrapped in an egg wrapper and then fried. We got the pico. Right? Kind of looks like a toffee pudding. So they Britain. actually make it in the banana leaves, like the rice, the sticky rice, and then they have like brown sugar things like that. And I guess they put it on a sizzling plate just to keep the like the hotness with the with the ice cream. That should that's I've never seen this before. They do the, the toron really nice here. The wrapper is actually super thin, so a lot of what you get is just the plantain. Mm -hmm. It's so good. Yo, this kind of, uh, yeah, it does taste a little bit Spanish with the plantain. It's essentially like a Maduros inside of an egg roll wrapper with ice cream on top. It's actually really, really good. Oh, that might be one of the best things I ate today. Bring the pico pico. <laughs> Bring it back. <laughs> David, don't get hit with the pico. Oh, you got a Bico charge. That's what you're trying to say. You got a Bico. No, everybody was like, what? I caught the federal Bico. I was like, wait, what's going on? All right, you guys, we're wrapping it up. We just had like the ultra traditional food where there was a lot of like grandmothers there at Ihawan. Then we came here. It was lit like Manila 2021. Where are we off to next? We're about to hit the Phil Ann market and see what little goodies we can procure. All right, so the next spot we got to go to, I heard that you guys just told me it's like, the Filipino market. In fact, it's called Phil Am. So literally, I've been going to the spot since I was like basically born. If you're from New York and you're Filipino and you first came over here, then you know this is the spot to go get all your shit. So they you guys probably ran into each other as kids here, but you guys just didn't know each other. I'm 94. I'm 93. Wow, y'all yeah, about the you're, same you're age. Saw each other. <laughs> and, and, and you're both mixed Filipino. You're half Irish, half Filipino. And you're half Bronx, half Filipino. Everybody know the vibes. We outside. Uh, all right, yo, John, John. Came through, man. Yo, what's up, New York City? Let's fucking go. Ah. Take the Philippines, come through. Manila all day, baby. John, John, what do you know about Phil Am Market here on the corner in Woodside? So Phil Am has been here for many, many decades, even before I was here in New York, if anything. I'm originally from the Philippines, came out too. Uh, I'm pushing that old, old, old age. But say it's been here about roughly about four to five decades, uh, thinking through pretty much this is the staple for play, for people to come and get their Filipino needs, their food. If, if, if they wanted to wire your money, you could either wire here across you from the Filipino bank or even here itself. So pretty much mom and pops all grew from here itself. If you grew up in New York and see Woodside for what it is, pretty much it, it attains this real Filipino culture and value starting here. All right, guys, we are inside Phil Am Market right now. What are we looking at? So if you go into Phil Am Market when you were a kid, you're going to look to the left because they got all the chips here. This is all your oh, little pieces. This is designed for the children. The prawn crackers right here. Right you got here. the cracklings. Like... Nah, I got to see. Where's the piatto? Oh, the piatto. those were fire going on. You got to have these. You got to have the chippy chippy right here. I used to put these on my fingers like they were ring. Yeah, and then you just bite them You off. bite them off. All right, so right right here, we have the bakery section. You have ensaymada, you have pandesal. Yo, I remember oh. eating these at Chris and Cobb's house all the time. I think I might have to get one of these. This was my favorite pandesal growing up. You take this, you warm it up a little bit, put a little butter. Oh man, it is heaven. So Christmas and like, 
like the Philippines, they call it the Burr month. So once it hits September, November, October, December, all that shit, all, all the, the Burr months, all the birds. that's when we start coming out with these paroles. Yo. So, cause it starts getting cold, so they be like, Burr. Burr. If you've ever been to a Filipino's house, you'll see this bottle everywhere in their house. Suka, vinegar. This specific brand, you put it on everything. This is the OG Wallis or the OG weapon that your mom used to beat you with. Bro, it goes like, that's the one that yeah. all the comedians always talk about? Yup, yeah, this is the one, this is the one. Is this like a broom or what is this? It's a broom, it's, it's made out broom. of bamboo, shredded bamboo. But and as you, you guys know, if you've ever been hit with bamboo, that shit, it, it snaps, it hurts. It, this is not fun to get hit hey. by. But it gets in all the crevices. So, this is my Lolo's favorite snack. This is the Tito Al Chicharrones. You take this, you put in a little bit of suka. It is delectable. Guys, you gotta try this. All right, you guys, I got the ube and samada. You got, Andrew, these uh, the chashu baos, right? The Filipino yeah. siu baos. Siu baos with asado. And then asado. Uh, we got the ube butter crackers, right? The dried mango. You, you said number two exporter in the world, yeah. right? Th these are literally my favorite things, my favorite desserts. I don't know Americano lang ako, but I mean, I'm both. My father speaks Tagalog growing up, you know, and that's all you know. He didn't know English coming over here, and I spoke to him in both languages. Jojo, you go, 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 go off on some Tagalog. Konti lang, you know what I'm saying? Subscribe for some of Filipinos out here. Uh, yeah. So, all the Filipinos out there, come lang dito, support the Filipinos. Of course, what it is. They want to see what Balot is. Balot is. Balot, Balot yeah. makes you hard, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I need the balloon. Just one, you're just gonna just get two, hard. Two balloon. <laughs> <laughs> just one, you won't get hard. Oh, bam, you went with the knuckles. There we Ooh, go. Snap. <laughs> Ready? You went too much. Juice. Add some juice in there. Mm, Whoa! Hit me up, hit me up. Mm, baby. Hit him up, hit me up, hit me up. Oh, oh get in there, boy. Wow! wow. It's starting to wrap up, but we got like one or two more spots, man. Where's the next one? Next one, we're going to Purple Dough. Let's go, baby. All right, you guys, we're at Purple Dough. We're with Mark. Welcome to Purple Dough. We're at Philippine American Bakery. What are your most famous dishes? Well, it's the Ubi Lechipot. Okay. You guys can come in and check it out. It's a half month, half cake kind of thing. All right, you guys, Purple Dough. Mark, please break down for us what we're looking at. We have the Ubi Cupcake here. Our signature item, the Ubi Lechipot. Half lunch on a half cake. Wow. And we got our cake donuts here. It's like a cake based donut, not a dough donut. And we have the coconut fondant, the ubi obviously with the toasted rice, we're called pita. And the calamansi, which is the Filipino lemon one. Oh, oh the calamansi! Oh, okay. Nice. Okay. Calamansi. 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 calamansi cake donut! Calamansi donut! Guys, if, if you didn't know, calamansi is a fruit native to the Philippines or Southeast Asia. It's kind of like a lime, lemon it's mix. Small, right? It's very small and it's like super, super tart. Last spot on this little manila crawl. We actually went outside a little bit of Woodside. We are right inside of Sunnyside, which is right next to Woodside. And we're outside of Tito Rads. Tito Rads is known to do an elevated, traditional Filipino food. They have really good sinigang. It's really known for. We got the really good Bicol Express, Kare Kare, Laing, like things like that. Like things like the Ukoi, Tokwat at Baboy, things like that that you'll see that we're going to be trying inside some braised pork with soy sauce you know just a real mixture melting pot of like asian food all together is going to be right here at Kitoran. i hear a lot of people talk about this spot so let's go in all right guys so this is the first dish at our new spot tito rads was established in 2006 this dish is called ukoi ukoi is a, like a fried assortment of vegetables kind of like sweet potato cassava mung and it's in a rice batter and it gets super super crispy and then you put like a version of suka on it key to this too it also has small shrimp in it ukoi Take a look at what we got here. There's sprouts inside. Big Usually, bean I, sprouts. I've never had deep fried bean sprouts. It's a perfect drinking food. Like it, you get that like nice salty, crunchy, vinegary, and it washes down really nice with a red wood. All right, right, you guys. All the dishes have arrived here at Tito Rads. This is like the new hot spot. All the Filipino foodies talk about it. That's what are we looking at? We have Sinigang Baboy over here. We have Equal Express Goat, kind of like Caldereta, as well as a jackfruit shrimp. Kind of, Laing. Laing. So th this spot is gonna be what a little bit more.
more like higher end, higher quality, or, or trying to be like a little bit fancier? I think this spot is just more well known. Everybody comes here to bring like their family friends to come over here because the food is so good But here. But we're not in Filipino town anymore. We kind of went like one mile mm -hmm. yeah. and then we reached here. So this is outside of the immediate Little Manila. Mm -hmm. And it, it kind of goes to show like even though we're a mile out from Little Manila, the kitchen was slammed with orders. Not just people sitting in here, but people ordering. So like, that's how you know this place like that, is yeah. legit. So I like to dump my rice actually inside the soup because it just... You don't do that it. too. All right. You dump it, you get a little bit of everything, you cut it up, get the pork. Okay. You get just all the mixtures and just eat it. Sinigang here at Tito Rad. Oh man. The tamarind comes out really nicely in the synagogue. So sour. The meat's super tender, and then the vegetables are also really well cooked. Mm. A rainy day, and it's cold, you get some synagogue. All right, so this is Bicol Express. It comes from Bicol, obviously. Bicol is our city? Um, I don't want to say the wrong thing, but I believe it's a part of the food. And then uh, over here, we've got a goat curry, almost. Andrew, this looks like it could be from a number of cultures, Vietnam, Jamaica. Yo, I want, just want to say, like, I've had a lot of Filipino food. I've never had the spicy goat dish, okay? It's got, like, potatoes in it. It has your sauce. It has kind of, like, your deep, dark spiciness. This is a deep cut. Because Bicol Express. Spicy goat. Those goat pieces were so big and juicy. Man, that was, that was high quality, man. I'm telling you. That... Was really good. So our last two dishes here at Tito Rods is we have a soy sauce braised adobo pork. Okay, and then we here we have this creamy jackfruit latin. My stomach is so full right now. The one thing that about Filipino restaurants, they give you quite the portion. All right, you guys, that brings us to the very end of our first Woodside Little Manila Crawl. Man, it was such a dope experience, very unique. What were you guys' major takeaways? This episode kind of means a lot to me. I grew up here in Woodside, and it really brought me back to childhood just to have all these little bites from all these places that I've been as a child. The crazy thing is, it tastes just as good as when I was a little kid, if not better. Basically, all I gotta say is, like, because, like, I was born and raised in the Bronx, like, coming to Queens was, like, a trip for us as a family. Like, every Sunday we will go, like, to Crystal's OG Filipino spot in Woodside or Ihawan, Kabayan, like, things like that. I just like coming to Queens in general because I can get my favorite, like, Filipino snacks, food. Hey, I think if you do everything that we did in the video or even half of the things, it makes the trip out of Queens super worth it, even if you don't live in the area. But I gotta say, the food is all very fairly priced. I mean, we're in Queens, no frills, they keep it real, it's very cheap, it's very affordable, and it's very authentic. No and frills. that's what I loved about Woodside Queens. No frills, keep it real, Ihawan Grill. Ooh. I'm fucking glad. No. Yeah, what's good? You know the vibes. Like, subscribe, comment down below what you think was your favorite spot. If I fucked up, if they fucked up, tell them if we fucked up on some shit. Let us know, because we weren't 100, but you know, we're going to keep it 100. Let us know. All right, you guys. Hey, you guys, this was a very fun episode of Fun Bros Food. Huge shout out to everybody. Follow their social down below. Benson, always thank you. Appreciate it, man. Till next time, we out. Peace. Malos, malos makes you hard, man. Yo, what's up, New York City? Let's fucking go!